Hello everyone, Ian here from Able City in Burbank and today I'm checking out how to capture anamorphic shots in the Alexa Mini using ProRes. And I was fortunate enough to have Nick Hayes from Anjou stop by and loan me two lenses. So we're going to take a normal spherical lens and shoot a 178 shot just as a reference point and then we'll switch over to anamorphics. To do the spherical shot, I was using the 16 to 40. This is a T28 lens with a close focus of two feet. The anamorphic zoom we're going to use is the compact 30 to 72. That's a T4 lens with a close focus of two feet, two inches. So as you can see, I have some footage here. So I went outside, did some shots, and I'm going to bring them back in here. And we're going to talk about workflow and what format is appropriate for what type of work. We've set our mini up in a mode called HD anamorphic. Now the intent of this is to be able to use these images on a 16 by 9 timeline. So you're not going to get the characteristic anamorphic look out of these images, but what you will get is the uh, aesthetics of an anamorphic lens in a 16 by 9 image. As you can see on our monitor to the side here, the image looks normal for 16 by 9. But let's go outside and shoot with our Ingenue Anamorphic Compact Zoom and see the optical characteristics that are inherited into this image. Two three nine two K is arguably one of the easiest modes in order to capture anamorphic, simply because the image is de-squeezed. We can drop it onto the timeline, and we can see the de-squeezed image in the viewfinder and on our monitor, as you can see to our side. So let's go outside and capture a two three nine two K image. I want to take a look at that 239 uh, shot that we did and I'm going to open it up here in the viewer and the first thing you're going to notice is that the frame lines are exactly as I want and it's unsqueezed so we don't need to do those steps so I'm going to take this ProRes file and I'm going to drop it down here into the media pool but I want to look at the thickness of the black lines top and bottom and the reason that's happening is that if I go into my project settings you're going to see that we are in a 1920 by 1080 timeline. Well, I want to see if I could maybe uh, change that slightly, the look of it, and get less black top and bottom. Everyone's got a different workflow for this. I'm just going to show you uh, one route that I'm going to approach for a 1920 by 1080 output. So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to choose a 2K output or a 2K timeline. So I'm going to choose this one and I'm going to make this into a 2K for monitoring. Save those preferences. And now I just lost a little bit of that uh, black line top and bottom. So let me do a little work on this and then we'll output it. And here's our finished shot from the 239 out to HD. Let's check our stats here and you can see that it is a 1920 by 1080 output and we've got the framing just exactly as I wanted it. We're going to look at a mode called 4x3 2.8K. Now this is the highest resolution we can capture off the sensor for anamorphic images. However, notice on the monitor it is not de-squeezed. We don't have a de-squeeze uh, capability in this mode. But what I have done is gone into the frame line generator and I have asked it to apply the 240 anamorphic frame lines for left and right of frame and also with a two times anamorphic lens. So those combinations all line up with the lens we're gonna to use to do this shot. So we're gonna go outside, capture this, and then we'll bring it into Resolve and I'll show you the workflow. Here we are in Resolve and I wanna take that 432.8K and output it as a 1920 by 1080. Let's go in and grab that shot first. I've got it on my drive and there's the shot. Couple things to note very quickly. You've got extra space on the left and on the right hand side of the frame here. I framed with the frame line generator in the mini for this post and this post. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to drag it into the media pool and there's our attributes. So first thing I wanna do is unsqueeze. So you control click or right click with your mouse and go to click 
and get clip attributes. And I want to change pixel aspect ratio from square to cinemascope. Okay. And now it's unsqueezed, but look, I still have this problem where I'm seeing more on the left and right hand side than I framed for. So how do I get rid of that? Well, let's go and see what we've got going on in here. And if I go up to my master settings, and I scroll up to the top here, you can see that my timeline is 1920 by 1080. Well, that makes sense because I was in fact capturing everything I saw in frame left to right, but I want to eliminate what I didn't see with my frame line generators. I'm going to make this a 2K uh, DCI 239 and I'll make this 2K 23976 and I'm going to save that. Okay, so now I've just gotten rid of the extra black bars top and bottom. I still have the problem of this left and right. So how do I solve that? Well, let me make this into a sequence first for timeline here. All right. And I'm going to go into my preferences again, or project settings rather, and I'm going to go to image scaling. And instead of scale entire image to fit, I'm going to sc scale full frame with crop. And when I do that, and I go to my edit. Now you can see, let me take the scroller. There you go. Now you can see, I go to the color page and you'll see it a little better there. I go full frame and see even better. And now you can see that the frame lines left and right match up with what I had with the frame line generators in my camera. So I'll do a little work on this very quickly and I'll be right back. I'm in the delivery page of Resolve, and I have asked for the output resolution to be 1920 by 1080. Let me go ahead and render that out, and let's take a look. I output a 1920 by 1080 file. Here it is, and look, it's got the framing for the fence posts on left and right, just as I framed in the viewfinder. That's excellent. Let's go in and take a look at the attributes. And as you can see, it is a ProRes 1920 by 1080 file. And that wraps up my look at capturing anamorphic files in ProRes using the Alexa Mini. Thanks for watching. I'll see you again soon.